I will give her vineyards there, and the valley a suffering for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Rhonda Lazert Ministries welcomes you to The Door of Hope. Welcome to The Door of Hope. It's a pleasure to be with you. The theme of the language of the Spirit, and as we looked last week, to see that we are journeying by His grace and mercy to a crown of glory and the call of the Spirit, the language of the Holy Spirit, reveals this to us. And because we know that, that we press forward, we press onward by His grace and mercy. And you'd say, well, you know, I've tried it, but it doesn't work for me. I get stuck or I regress. But the Holy Scriptures with uh, St. Peter, the second book of St. Peter, we've looked at the first one last week, but the second book, Peter reveals to us that we are participants of, a, of the divine nature. And so God hasn't left us alone to sort of carve it out and run as fast as we can and be as good as we can. He's put a, a, a deposit of his divine nature within us. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. It's really there. By his grace and mercy, God hasn't left us. Uh, he has put the first deposit of His Spirit within us so that we can overcome all obstacles. In fact, uh, there's no excuse. And we looked last week. Our major problem is that we will not leave sin alone, that we think that we can grow in grace and we can grow before God and, you know, have, have blessed and prospered lives by His Spirit. And yet we're, we're pretty deep in sin. And I don't know if the Church of Jesus Christ has ever been more carnal. Uh, we started out about 30 years ago, King's Kids, and though there is a great truth to that, uh, we've believed it to the expense of holy living. And so when, we, uh, when someone says there's a Christian and you're doing business with them, you don't necessarily know what you've got. You may have uh, someone you can't trust anyway and that should not be so. So 2 Peter brings these words of the Spirit to us, and he addresses this need that we have. His divine power has given us everything needed for life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. Thus He has given us through these things His precious and very great promises, so that through Him you may escape from the corruption that is in the world because of lust and may become participants of the divine nature. Now, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that clear that lust is at the door and yet because of God giving us his divine nature that the great and precious promises are ours, our yes and amen. But we're out there trying to make it happen as unholy people uh, there is very little anointing around. I'm sorry, I just don't uh, see it that often when we gather in collective assembly. Uh, you can't blame the pastor for everything. Uh, it is largely with the body of Christ. I like uh, uh, Derek Prince who said you can't get lost in the shuffle. You're always in the New Testament on a one-to-one one -to -one with God. It's called the priesthood of all believers. Uh, the veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom, and we enter in by faith, and we stand before Him, and Christ, we stand before Christ, uh, and we make our petition before Him, and He has removed that middle wall of partition. And you might be comfortable traditionally with that, but the truth of divine scripture is that you have access to God, come boldly before the throne room of grace, that you may receive help in times of trouble. So we have been given a divine nature, we have been given great and precious promises, and we are called to move forward, we're called to touch the hem of his garment, 
we're assured that we can receive that which we have need of. And yet, largely speaking, uh, we are falling far, far, far short. And as we read Peter, a man who sinned himself, who made his mistakes, who has deep regrets, still, as we looked last week, he said, be anxious for nothing, but to cast our cares upon God because he cares for us. So we approach him knowing that God is love, that it is his love that has conquered uh, our evil nature, that has um, conquered the enemy of our lives, that he's really a dog on a leash unless we decide to go into his camp. And if we go into the camp of the enemy, uh, we will be slaughtered. And we have accounts of that in scripture of lying, stealing, uh, thievery, uh, fornication, adultery, all of those evil things are a list and they separate us from God. In some cases, they lose their life to preserve their spirit. That's another indication, but sin is at the root of separation. Sin is at the root of not receiving the great and precious promises of God because they hinder us. They hinder us from moving forward. They hinder us from really touching the hem of his precious garment. And as we learn to move forward in him, we, it says, taste and see that the Lord is good. And my own journey, I share it from time to time, only so that we can relate uh, my own journey of going through hardships but yet extending my hand to the master's hand, lifting my hands unto him and tasting and receiving of his Holy Spirit, which you can't explain, but you know that you know that you know it's happened. And that exchange of touching Christ in my sorrow, trust, trusting, touching Christ in my need, and then seeing that because of that flow of the spirit that my needs were met. I like the truth of the anointing. You know, we, I run that prayer line throughout the week uh, during the telecast, and when the anointing is present, you know, I hear back all the time, uh, we come, the anoint, we pray, and because the anointing is there, whatever, the need is met. And we don't understand, you know, what God is going to do. We don't need a formula, and we don't need a list. Uh, we're not cherry pickers. We don't choose this and decide not to choose that. But because of the anointing, being there in our presence as Christians, bearing the name of Christ, that anointing moves and clears everything out, brings healing, brings wholeness, brings deliverance, brings answers to prayer. And it is so the anointing is what we seek as a Christian people. My, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. Uh, that's in the book of Isaiah. It's the verse that Jesus reads in the temple. And if you read down, he leaves out the part, uh, the day of vengeance of our God. We're in New Testament times. We're in the, the framework of grace, the time fold of grace. And we're living as paupers. We're living, the church of Jesus Christ is living as paupers. We're not entering in uh, to that level of his anointing and the fulfillment of his anointing in our lives because we are caught up in the wood, hay, and stubble, or we're caught up in sin, and we must repent and forsake it and follow. Choose you this day, life or death. It's not enough to, you know, have said the sinner's prayer as a kid or as a young adult or an altar call or even as a senior mature person, it's not enough to go up once in your life and say, well, I did that and now I belong to God. I've repented, yes, yes. But uh, it says to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And I'm not saying that uh, salvation is earned because it's not. But certainly if you want to go deeper, if you want to have an anointed life, if you want to have your needs met, if you want to um, be prosperous, if you want to be healed, you will have to forsake sin 
and we have become participants of his divine nature according to Holy Scripture. And that language of the Spirit, it's that which we need to grow. It's that which we need to lay hold of. It says, I pray always. I pray in the Spirit. I pray with my understanding. I read the word daily. Man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And it's not that we do it 24 hours a day, but a simple chapter a day and a commitment of our lives to God uh, for that day and then to forsake the sin uh, that so easily would lay hold of us and keep us from the fullness of the Spirit is something that we have very, very much control over. Uh, Choose you this day, life or death. We're giving ourselves too much leeway, too much slack. And the other part of the anointing that I enjoy is that it says of the anointing that the anointing remains. Hallelujah. It abides. You're not starting over every morning. You're not. It's increasing. God, by his spirit, wants to increase the anointing in your life. He wants you to grow. He wants that anointing that nothing, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, every mountain is removed. That's what the menorah means. That's a symbol of Israel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, this mountain is removed. And Peter has hold of that for us, teaching us. And he again, participants of the divine nature, for this very reason you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness, and goodness with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with endurance, and endurance with godliness, and godliness with mutual affection, and mutual affection with love. For these things are yours and are increasing among you. They keep you from being ineffective and unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There it is. Just so simply put for us that they, if you're going to get entangled with sin, you're going to be ineffective. You're going to be unfruitful. You're going to be, uh, have meager rations. And yet God loved the world that he came to this world to rescue us uh, from the evil that is here, the deceitfulness, the trials and the tribulations that are here. My, if I look at my life and, you know, see what I've gone through and yet feel quite whole, quite happy, quite very blessed, uh, and I go back and I think, you know, how did that happen? Uh, simply put, it was putting my hand in the master's hand and knowing that if God was for me, that nothing could truly, truly be successfully against me. And to be able to move and put my hand in his hand and move forward in strength and power, learning, uh, learning the language of his Holy Spirit, learning the language of Holy Scripture. I started reading the Bible in my very early 20s. Um, I had gone to church all my life. Uh, there was, it's a liturgical service, uh, which I like. Um, And when you heard scripture, you knew they were scripture. But then going back and never reading uh, certainly the New Testament for myself uh, made me realize that, uh, you know, I was out of it. I I couldn't put two and two together. I knew some truths, but how to make them, how to appropriate them for my lives and how to move forward and use the language of the Spirit and the life of the Spirit, I had no vocabulary. So what I did... I had an opportunity where I had some time on my hands. The boys were in school. My, I had remarried. My husband was away. I really basically didn't have much to do. And um, I crawled into that waterbed, and I remember reading the New Testament. I read it through. Then I read it again, and I read it again, and I read it again. And I noticed quite a few things. I noticed the instruction that was there. I noticed the linking uh, here a little, there a little. Isaiah said precept upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little, here a little, there a little. I started to make a connection. And I also noticed that I felt better. I also noticed that something within me uh, was happening, uh, that I was receiving strength, that I was receiving, you know, a spiritual backbone. 
I'm timid by nature, but I was getting stronger. I was receiving, and I, I lost that uh, not being so sure of myself uh, because I, you know, I grew up old school, all of that, you know, the male female thing. It's why I began to grow my spirit. I, I wasn't so worried that I was a female. I began to know the Word of God. I wasn't so worried that I, uh, you know, wasn't sort of a minister or a priest, though later I became ordained, uh, I noticed strength. I noticed truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. The truth of divine holy scripture will heal you, will set you free, will put something in your mind, uh, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of might, the spirit of power. And uh, I began to notice that if I, it's like, um, you know, if, one, if every one, one uh, stake I put in the ground, when I put it in spiritually speaking, it's like I got a fold, tenfold back. I received more than any effort I was placing into it. It wasn't a coincidence. If I did my little job, my little part, Jesus says that the disciples um, in their crisis hour at Gethsemane said, could you not have prayed one hour? I mean, at the, the crux of the matter, at the culmination of the cross, Jesus is, had only asked his disciples to play, pray an hour. And uh, how much less do we pray, you know, a few minutes, 15, 20 minutes, a half an hour when you're getting started to clear that line and put some spiritual backbone into your life and start thinking differently. Peter goes on to say, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief. And then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise and the elements will be dissolved with fire and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of person ought you to be? You ought to be leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth where righteousness is at home. So there he shows us uh, that not only our own lives and the course of our own lives with this very world in which we live and exist uh, will come to an end. And there is going to be a new kingdom, the kingdom of God. Uh, where there is no sin and no unrighteousness and nothing ungodly. And how different is that going to be? Uh, we know nothing of that, uh, that life would be holy. And yet he has called us personally out of darkness. That's what the call is, out of darkness into the marvelous journey of light, the light of his dear son. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace without spot or blemish and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation so that our beloved brother Paul wrote to you according to the wisdom given him. Speaking of this, as he does in all of his letters, there are some things in them hard to understand which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. You therefore, beloved, since you are forewarned, beware that you are not carried away with the error of lawless and lose your own stability, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Amen. Uh, so there it is, so wonderfully put that God has been calling his church uh, not to be unstable, to live lives worthy of his calling. And out of that comes the power, the glory, the language of his Holy Spirit, the direction of his Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, I'm shocked. Um, I'm not that smart. And yet, God, by his grace and mercy, the working of his Holy Spirit, how much, you know, we're forewarned, we're a step ahead of the game, so to speak. And we're just ordinary people. 
And the word of God says, come, whosoever will may come. And you can come. We come with our brokenness. We come with our, you know, lack of information. We come with just not very much. We don't bring much before God. But yet if we come and take it seriously and say, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief that the Spirit of God overtakes our lives. And the Spirit first. Remember, Paul said, I pray your spirit, your soul, and your body be preserved blameless. And that glory, you know, I, I still celebrate the fact that I got healed. Uh, you know, 36 is young to die. Uh, and if it hadn't been for his grace and mercy and reaching forward and moving by his spirit, would I have been able to enter in? I, a lady said, well, I'm uncomfortable with that, uh, that you had some part. I said, no, no, I'm not. I, I know what happened. I know that for three months I struggled uh, to be made whole. And that persistent, moving forward, that focus on Christ and his gospel, knocking at the door, whosoever will may come. And it says, knock, ask so that you might receive. And I would asked more than once. And how glorious that if we pursue and keep moving in, you know, we're trying to make it work from without doing our homework. We're trying to receive of the spirit of glory. We're, start, we're trying to receive of the kingdom of God's grace without really putting much effort into it. We're suffering from entitlement. And uh, it says, you know, Paul said, I, it's Philippians 3. I press towards the mark of the prize of the upward call in Christ Jesus. The Bible teaches us that we have to be diligent and move forward to receive fully of his spirit. And when we receive that anointing in our lives, it takes over and makes us whole. Thank you, Lord, that as we journey and put our faith and trust in you and our effort, Lord, that you open the door widely and that you have that banqueting table and we sup with you and you with us. And so we pray together that we might keep keeping on, as James says, keep keeping on, folks, dear ones, keep keeping on, move forward, forsake the nothingness, the sin and the depravity knowing that we're part of the kingdom of God and there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth created. And you say, Lord, a soul winner is wise. You say, cast your cares upon him because he cares for us. Leave all that anxiety, all our, our brokenness at the cross and rise up, rise up in newness of life. We praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for your grace and mercy poured out upon us. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen and amen. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou biddest come to God, I come, I come, just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul. blood can cleanse each spot or land of God I come I come just
just as I am Though tossed about With many a conflict Many a doubt Fightings and fears with Just as I am, thou wilt we see, wilt welcome part, done cleanse, really, because thy promise. We're here to join with you uh, so that the anointing of God may flow in your lives and to pray those prayers of, of confession, to pray those prayers of ever-increasing faith to move on and keep keeping on. And I do ask you for your financial help so that we can continue to broadcast. Uh, it's expensive and I don't spend that much time uh, asking for your help and support, but I do need it. And with that, it is spent on the gospel, the proclamation of the precious gospel, which is Jesus' command, after the resurrection, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. So thank you for your help over the many, many years, and thank you for uh, remembering us in this labor of the precious gospel. God bless you. Take care and have a great week. It is your financial gifts that allow Rhonda Lazert to remain on the air. All gifts payable to Rhonda Lazert Ministries are tax deductible. 